the Dragon Queen is back. Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got eco-friendly bike cleaner, an indoor gradient simulator, an aero oversized pulley wheel system, new sunglasses, and our main talking point, hot tech from the Tokyo Olympics. You go, Dragon Queen. Let's start with the poll from last week, in which we asked, did you agree that the 2021 uh, Tour de France was won using disc brakes? And 28% of people said, yes, Pogaccio did win uh, because of using disc brakes, because he gained his key time there. Unfortunately, 50% uh, said he used both rim and disc brakes, so the debate rages on. Yeah, um, fair I, enough. I'm just gonna add one thing into the fire though there. Go on. In t if you look at the total stage victories, by not just Pogaccia, but by everyone. Like, I think it was 18 of the stages were won on disc brakes. Really? So the tour was won on disc brakes. You've been doing some serious maths there. Yeah, you? And, wow. and, and something else that isn't up for debate is, well, the men's Olympic road race. Yeah. Carapaz clearly winning on rim brakes. Yeah, but then did you see the women's race where Anna Kaysenhofer did win on disc brakes on a Scott Addict? So the debate continues. Anyhow, this week we are talking about hot tech from the Tokyo Olympics. And it's really interesting at the Olympics because a lot of riders and athletes aren't obliged necessarily to use the equipment they are with their sponsored pro teams that they ride for. And so we see special equipment brought out, sometimes things that they think is the best or the fastest. Also, we see cutting edge equipment developed by the federations unveiled to the eyes of the world, especially on the track. Yeah, now, before we get onto that, we're just gonna talk about Carapaz's bike because it's particularly special. So, he rode a beautiful Pinarello F, but it was in the plutonium flash colorway that was oh. in our video that we showed. Very I think nice. it looked very nice. It did. Um, had a few little Japanese and Ecuadorian flag details on it. And also with lightweights as well. Dan Martin was also spotted using lightweight wheels on his factor bike. A bit of a switch from the black ink wheels that Israel startup nation usually use. And oh, yeah, pros love lightweights, don't they? They do. And I can't wait to see what bike Pinarello give Carapaz now that he's an Olympic champion. The oh, colour scheme. Yes. Uh, it's got to be a gold one, hasn't it? A bit, yeah. It'd be so nice if we got a gold one like the gold ones they sent us before yeah. for the, the Dream Ride vid. That might be. Yeah, that, but. Something even better if they could add something. Yeah. BMC provided their uh, sponsored athletes with custom painted bikes with their national flags on them. And another cool thing that I saw um, was Ceramic Speed were making these oversized pulley wheel systems that had the nation's flag on for whichever cool. rider was. Yeah, they were a nice Very little cool. detail that were just yeah. nicely visible on the, the back of the bike. Trek also gave all their sponsored athletes some very multi-coloured tracks to use as well, which I thought was very cool. Yeah, and that was across mountain bike, triathlon and road cycling. Which yeah. They're all, all the Trek athletes were on those bikes, which was really nice. And, you know, Van Vleuten, she may have come second in, in the women's road race, but she did have a cool custom painted bike Tokyo. Okay. And this, it had a, it has like a manga kind of artwork design on it, which is a nice celebration of Japanese culture and something that, I don't know, we've not really seen that before on a bike, so I thought that was really nice. Pidcock pulled off an absolutely stunning victory in the cross-country mountain bike. It made all the more impressive the fact that he's a part-time mountain biker, very young, and up against dedicated mountain bikers. Yeah, and it's really interesting from a tech perspective as well, because Pinarello is, is Pidcock's bike sponsor, but they don't make a mountain bike, which kind of then gives, well, Tom Pidcock carte blanche to use whatever equipment he likes, as long as he scrubs out the logos. So we did our sort of detective work. Investigating. We did that, well, we spoke to GMBN and, and they've told us what all the bits are. <laughs> <laughs> so he's using a BMC four stroke full suspension 29er mountain bike. And then it gets quite interesting because he's got a Suntour fork on there with a hundred mil of travel on the front. And then he's got Syncross bars, stem, and wheels, so these are Scott's proprietary components. So you wouldn't necessarily see them on a bike other than a Scott. Another cool thing is that Ineos did a load of equipment testing with him. They tested everything from frame to wheel to suspension, to tires to tire pressure, everything. And the bits that he chose was what they felt was the best for him. Yeah, I and mean, they've left no stone unturned. No. And it's really cool to see them taking this 
sort of uh, approach to a discipline that they've never raced in before with such attention to detail. Yeah, well, I mean, it seemed to work for them. Yeah, really cool. Right, Ollie, we haven't actually spoke about one of my favourite things yet. The track. Now, at the time of filming this, the track hasn't actually begun yet, but we know there's going to be some serious hot tech there this year. Yeah, starting with Azizul Awang, who is going to be trying to win Malaysia's first ever Olympic gold medal, which is kind of a big deal. That'd be amazing. So, for those of you who don't know him, he is current world champion, but he's a, a sprinter who competes in the sprint and also the Kirin. And he's got some fancy tech going on, yes. which has been supplied by, um, well, thanks to the Vortec Works uh, WXR bike, which you've actually seen and, uh -huh. and got your hands on before. It's an incredible looking machine, and it's got this intriguing uh, bespoke four spoke aero wheel at the front, massive chain ring on his bike as well. And compared to some other designs we'll see, you know, in a, in a moment, it's interesting that they've just gone really narrow with this. Mm. Some of the things have gone wider, but this is it's so narrow on the fork. The gap between the fork and the front wheel is teeny tiny. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's not going to be plain sailing. There is plenty of new toys at this track event. And speaking of which, probably the most talked about bike, the Hope Lotus HBT, a radical looking machine that we understand is incredibly fast. And the bike actually has 16 centimeter wide forks. And basically the goal of the forks is to be in line with the rider's legs, making it more aerodynamic. Yeah, and well, it is absolutely rapid. And we know because we're the only civilians who've uh, been able to test it. That makes it sound like a weapon doesn't it? Yeah. But we, <laughs> how, much, how much fast are we talking? Well, we have put it in the tunnel and we've compared it to the previous bike they used in Rio, which was the Cervelo track bike. And I mean, the numbers are outrageous. Like, Can't it is tell a lot. us? Well, I'm not going to tell you. We do have the numbers. I can't reveal them yet because they're going to be in an up and coming documentary oh. on GCN Plus. Going to have to watch done. it then. But my favourite has to be the Italian bike, the Pinarello Max. What a surprise. It is beautiful. It is. And it does take advantage of the UCI three to one ratio. Yeah, well that being scrapped. Yeah. yeah. And then them getting rid of the minimum tube thickness on other sections as well. You've got the nice thick forks. Yeah, the fork, it's like, it's just so much deeper, isn't it? Yeah. Than, than the Pinarello Belide hour record, which was the track bike that they used before. And you can just see it's just, well, Presumably a lot more aero. I would call that bike very a beautiful bike. Yeah, it is very nice. It's a pretty bike. It's a really cool uh, clothing tech as well, quite literally, uh, thanks to no pins. And a cool story I find out, they're supporting a Syrian-born athlete called Ahmad Badreddin Weiss, who's actually a refugee and now living in Switzerland because of the, the horrible conflict that's been happening in, in Syria and is consequently competing at the Olympics uh, under the IOC's refugee team, which is an amazing story in itself yeah. and, you know, wish him all the best and it's what the Olympics is all about. But he's got this really cool clothing because temperature management is considered to be a massive deal in Tokyo. It's been very hot, very humid. And No Pins has got their sort of flow suit, their fancy TT suit, and then specially combined it with their Sub-Zero indoor training gear, which features pockets for ice packs. So that's, you know, so they can yeah. put the ice packs in to keep them cool. The temperature management, he's going to be using that in, in the time trial, which is really, really cool. And they're also supporting other teams as well. So you'd expect New Zealand and, and Spanish athletes uh, to be using that kit as well. I know Castelli have designed suits for the TT and the road race that are cooler and designed to be better in the heat too. Yeah, they're being used by Ineos riders, but also the Italian National Federation as well. And we understand that they've developed a whole host of special suits for different track disciplines that are optimised for different speeds. So, like the team pursuit suits are optimised for like, you know, 65 kilometres an hour. Well, they've got Ghana on their team. Um, but then it also means that riders like Viviani competing in the Omnium were using different suits for different disciplines of the Omnium. And we just know the suits are such a big deal yeah, now. Like yeah. with GB, you know, yeah. you, were, you were telling me earlier about how they get their suit and they're only allowed to wear it in that in race the center, yeah. in the track centre yeah. and then it's off. 
and they often have a suit that is like, you know, a worn once suit for that event and then it's done. Yeah. And it only lasts one race. It's mental. Because of all the advancements in tech, we can almost certainly see a lot of the world records being broken in the Olympics and probably in every other Olympics to come because of all the tech. But how do we feel about this? Yeah, well, the Olympics is taking place in Japan. Yeah. So, you know, there, Japanese care in racing is hugely popular. And in that, they have to use the same regulation kit and bikes, yeah. you know, all the time. And I guess the advantage of that kind of approach is that it would mean it's easy to compare riders from different generations. So you could have an easy comparison between Mercs and Wiggins and yeah. Ganna, which would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the other advantage is it makes the sport more accessible to poorer nations, which are otherwise priced out because, you know, like that WXR bike, 25 grand, the Hope Lotus bike, you yeah. know, 12 grand, I think that is. Yeah. Yeah, very expensive. Yeah. The disadvantage is that cycling has always been as much about the equipment as the rider, and it is great to see innovation. Yeah, we love tech. I mean, basically, we do. It, we, if, if we got rid of that, then... We'd, we'd have to get rid of the tech channel. I think we should have a poll. Um, do you think in the Olympics, all riders should have to use the same equipment or be able to use whatever equipment they like, all the latest innovation and technology. I think, it'd, I think it'd be so interesting to see everybody on exactly the same level level playing field. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of. Just move for one that. race. Yeah. Yeah, just to see. Yes, yeah. where we're at. Yeah. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. Starting with the new Elite Riser, which is a brand new gradient simulator for indoor training. So a bit similar to Wahoo Kicker Climb, if you've seen one of those before, but you attach it to your, the front of your bike in place of the front wheel, and then it can simulate gradients in virtual worlds, either tw up to 20% uphill and 10% decline. And it's got Ant Plus and Bluetooth connectivity as well, so it you know perfectly connects with whichever indoor training app you're using, whether that's Zwift, Ruby, or one of the others. If you'd rather control things manually, then you can on the little unit on the top. And it's also controllable with the Riser app on Android and iOS too. Yeah, pretty cool. But best of all, if you want to find out more about it and be in with a chance of winning an elite training, well, indoor training bundle, including the new Riser, well, you can because Alex has done an unboxing video. So make sure you check that out. Next up, we've got some new sunglasses from Sun God. And these are the new Iras. They're a frameless design with an optional frame on the bottom, which you can see is fitted on there at the moment. They've got a big cylindrical polycarb, well, not polycarbonate lens. It's made from a nylon uh, based lens, which according to Sun God is different from the polycarbonate lenses that are used by like 100% and Oakley. And they say that it offers greater optical clarity than those competitors. Well, which is quite interesting. Also very light, just 28, they are very light. 28 grams. 27 actually. 27, oh, okay. Yeah. And the big cool thing about Sun God glasses is they offer loads of customization, like when you buy them, which a lot of other brands offer, well, they charge big bucks for your customization, but that's kind of like included in, it's like their USP, which I think is quite Yeah, cool. I think we should have a poll on this. What, hot or not? Hot, hot or not? Yeah. Yeah, vote in the GCN app. The glasses, not man. Yeah, not me. Not me and the glasses as well, because they're probably a little bit big on my face, or sometimes I feel like my cheeks are a bit. Mm. Well, I think you pull them off. Mm. Thanks. Next up, we've got some really cool stuff from Muck Off. Very Check cool. this out. The Muck Off has come up with the world's first eco friendly, plastic free bike cleaner, and it's called Punk Powder. This is a box full of it. So, it's a powdered based bike cleaner, and it comes in these packets that then has a paper sachet inside and then one of these packets makes two liters of bike cleaner and the sachet is designed in a way that it it opens and then it can funnel nicely the, the, the powdered cleaner into your water bottle and they say that it's as potent um, and as good at cleaning as their previous cleaners but way better for the environment. It saves 92% uh, the packaging. It's 61 tonnes less plastic a year. Two litres, that makes. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? Well, no, that's one litre, and then there's another uh. litre in here. But, yeah, massively sort of reduces the carbon footprint of 
of bike transporting bike cleaner around and it's just better for the planet. Yeah, they also do a bundle for life as well, which is pretty cool. And it comes with a aluminium bottle instead of a plastic bottle and um, a beefed up squirty thing as well. So that's this the technical term for it. Beefed up. That's, squirty thing. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what you call them, but that's going to last even longer as well. And I mean, come on. Yeah. That is pretty cool. It's cool. It's, it's a great idea of having a dedicated sort of cleaning bottle rather than just constantly yeah. buying plastic that, that, ones, that replacing your plastic forever. one. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good way of doing it. The ingredients are all plant-based in here and it's, you know, readily biodegradable. So I mean, you it's get, designed to help the environment. Get a stand for it as well. It's, it's good, isn't I'm, it? I mean, I'm a big fan of this. Help save the planet, help save the polar bears, clean your bike. Winner. And last in Hot Tech this week, we have this, which is an SLF motion oversized pulley wheel system. We've seen oversized pulley wheel systems before, but... We haven't seen one like this before. No, this is an aero one. So it's got a carbon fibre sort of aero fairing over it to make it even more aerodynamic. Apparently they've tested it and it is. That's got your name written all over it. That is a bit of you. I, it's, it is seriously If you cool, were a jockey wheel, that, that's what you'd be. Thanks. Um, Aero. I mean, oh, it'd be good to get this on the GCN TT bike, although perhaps we shouldn't if we're going to race Sai again. We don't want to make him any yeah, faster. No. But um, yeah, I think it's a seriously radical bit of bling bike jewellery that I've <laughs> not seen before that you want to hang off your bike, but check this out, check this out, check this out. We might, might be here a while. More hot tech next week. <laughs> Cha -ching. Time now for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit evidence of the upgrades you've made to your bike's equipment or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize a GCN water bottle or bead on, if you're French or pretentious. Anyway, last week's results we had Bailiff Six with his Fuji uh, Marketplace $10 restoration versus Jason Richardson One and his £40 Fixie project. Uh, well, quite a big margin of victory here. Yes, 64% to Jason Richards One. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah get in contact uh, on social media and we'll get your water bottle out to you. Well done. Uh, Who have we got first right. this week, Manon? <laughs> Moving on to this week. First up, we've got Stephen C. Wanted to see if I could get a custom bike on a budget, a bit of eBay shopping, DIY spray paint, and we have success. So started off with a Boardman, pretty basic looking bike. Mm. I'm loving the paint job on this. Yeah, he's gone for like orange and black. Yeah, and, some, I think... and, and like some like funky line work on the top tube and fork. I really like it on the inside of the forks. Yeah, that I think is that's cool. That's a very nice detail, and on on the top tube there, very nice work. Done a very um, good job there. That is a that is a really cool bike, mm. and yeah, it's um, it looks like it's worth a lot more than what it's cost you, yeah. which is impressive. Um, it's not going to be plain sailing though. It never is, is it, Ollie? No. No. Uh, because he's up against 70 Charger 500, who wanted to create a gravel bike, and so did so by getting this early 70s Azuki road bike frame that was in his size and crucially found that it had sufficient clearance for wider sort of gravel style tires. Stripped it down to the bare metal, uh, primed it, painted it and went with like an original blue metallic colour that it had, sort of like a, almost like a hammerite type yeah. thing going on there. And he's made and installed uh, original reproduction style uh, decals. The Very Azuki nice. logo. Yeah. Really cool. And he really liked the lug work on the frame. So he's made those a feature and done those gold, which we like. What do you make of it? I like it. I like that he hasn't like completely changed it. Mm. He's kind of kept, you know, the colour scheme. I think it's a real and... trash to treasure yeah. job. Like the, the, um... Got a bit of a facelift. Yeah. I am a little bit concerned by that sort of weird hanging skeleton thing though in his living room. Interesting. Didn't actually see that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's an explanation I'm sure there's. It. I'm sure yeah. there's a plausible explanation. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, both very good upgrades. Mm, let are. us, uh, you know, let us know who you think should win and vote. You decide. No pressure. It's now time for the only reason I'm here. What? The bike vault. I'm back. 
Okay, well you get to submit pictures of your bikes using the GCN app and we judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, then... They go to the bike fault forever and the bell gets ridden. Ringing? Ringing. Ridden. Ringing. The bell ring gets the ringing. Ringing. <laughs> the ringing. Uh, you can vote on all the, bike vaults we, all the bikes we feature uh, in the GCN app as well. Play along at home. First up, this. Scott Addict. This was the most super nice bike in the app last week. What do you make of that? That is a sexy bike. It's very... I love that colour. Very good. That is that is similar to well, it's, I'd say it's quite similar to that the bike I spray painted. It is. I, it's, it's, yeah. I, I, I like that very much. Uh, the Perfect only background. Oh, oh it's, what it's are you going to say? The only the only thing that it could be slightly better would be if they used a shadow stand. Yeah. Rather than that mm. that stand on the front wheel. But anyway, very nice. I think yeah. that is a super nice. Um, but do, do, does that get the bell or is that automatically? Yeah, you can ring the bell for that. Get the bell. Um. Next up, we have got uh, VHMHYC79HQ. That is a catchy name. That is. And their uh, Shiv, S Works Shiv triathlon bike. What do we make of that? Do we take triathlon bikes in the I think we bike can. vault? I think we can. Are you yeah. sure? I mean, the wheels are aligned. It's not quite in Biggie Smalls, but I think it's, it's a good background. Looks like it's in Kona. Mm, it does. Lightweight disc is seriously bling, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think that's. That's super nice, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm going to have to go super I nice. Super I love, nice. absolutely love the paintwork on the frame as well. Yes. <laughs> Who's next? Next up, we've got Bug Boy with a Canyon Arrow. Oh, gold Ooh. chain. Cha-ching. Great background. Not in Biggie Small. Oh, no. Nice. Next, uh, we've got Sean Eleven. He is... Oh, Ooh. Look, look at this. It's a Cervelo Hello. R3 disc with uh, a bright yellow frame, absolute black oval chain rings, Ultegra group set, Swiss side Hadron wheels. That's, oh, yeah, yeah, we're can on we, the same can, page. Can we just take the, the details on the um, the bottom spaces on... Rainbow. Yeah, and uh, on the wheels. And that match and with the wheels, yeah. How they're all aligned. That's dreamy, that. That okay. is very good. Um, moving on, we've got Last, Lasty F1 Fan 1 with... Um, <laughs> Specialized. A specialized tarmac SL6. Um, uh, mm. I mean, it, uh, the boxes are all been ticked. This is someone who knows yeah. the rules. The, the wheels are, are well aligned. Are they GCM bottles? No. They are elite, though. Similar. Yeah. There's a f I would have removed a few of the accessories. Yeah. Is it, it's it's, it's close, close, but it's, it's just not. If, if we're unsure, we just have to. Do you know why it's not? It. It's not because the, weeds the, at the bottom. Well, the tyres. Oh. Continental is in within line of the valve on the rear tire, and 5000 is in line with That's the valve. That's it. On the... I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but nice. that, that was it. Uh, Eric Gasparo with his Chinelli. Oh, gold chain. Track bike. What do gold you mean? chain. Oh, yeah. Oops, sorry. A Vigorelli. What do you reckon? Nice. I think super that's, nice. I think it's super nice. Oh, but valves. Oh. Uh, now you've said it, I can't unsee it. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> so close. Well, unfortunately, that's it for the end of the show. It's a shame to end on. Yeah, I know. Oh, I hope well. you've, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, the Dragon Queen being here again. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends, and make sure you check out our uh, Quantum Leap documentary on GCM Plus about the Hope Lotus. HPC. So you can find out how fast it actually is. Yeah, because it is. Um, well, we had to retest it because we how didn't. How many times? A, a few times because we didn't believe what the wind tunnel was telling us. It's cool. 